8,635 pounds, an Eagle HT 29.5 BHDS just came back to us on trade here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Um, the uh, Basically, owners thought that their uh, adult children and grandkids would come along with them. And after a couple years of that really just not being the case, they decided to swap it out for a, a bigger triple slide couples rig. However, along the way, they did not neglect this RV. It has been very well maintained. Like the original grill is there. You can see where they cleaned that after use. They did little things like added this little widget here to keep your um, your pigtail, your seven way plug from potentially, you know, getting drug on the ground and keep that excess slack all taken care of. You're gonna find a couple little things inside. No major, they've never done any major things to it. Just a couple handy little things to not just have it in good working order, but to keep it that way preventatively. They did a very good job with this RV. With the uh, slide closed here, the previous owners did a really good job of kind of taking all the you know precautionary measures that you really should in transit uh for instance you see how the uh the sink cover there they actually just kind of scooted under the cushion so that it wouldn't bounce around slide around crash into anything in transit i also noticed um on the uh main entry or pardon me the bedroom door over here they put a little um floor stopper to keep that from kind of swinging around in transit uh they i'm actually in the trailer as they're getting unhooked from their truck and trading it in currently i jumped on this one the moment it arrived and uh, they're you know they're putting wheel checks under the tires to get unhooked they were very actively invested in uh, proper like use preventative care maintenance everything they just found they they didn't need the bunks and they're swapping up to a, a larger couples camping eagle here at Halo RV that's really the only reason she's here now in terms of travel accessibility at a glance this big peninsula countertop is being a little bit of a bully and blocking us off but there's an easy way around it if you put that table down in transit, you can just do the little knee walk to get around that thing. Not a knee walk, that's a different thing. That's a teddy bear that lives in outer space. But a, a, a knee walk, and you can sort of do the, the, the little, you know, uh, fifth wheel knee shuffle, get over that thing. Then you can get back to the uh, refrigerator and, and get to everything. You can kind of toss some bags between the slide wall and that bunk sliding door there to load the kids' stuff up. But most of the time, this one's really intended to be used with that uh, slide open. And despite how many, oh my gosh, tens of thousands of RVs I've seen through my career now with a lot of years of experience doing this, it still amazes me every time I see a slide closed and then open the just dramatic difference in space and feel and comfort that it provides when you do something like that. Now this is a, uh, this is a model where everybody wins a little bit. The, uh, the kids or the guests, as it may be, they've got themselves a nice private rear bunk area because there is a full sliding door wall combo job there that we'll see in a few minutes. But if you notice, you've also got this easy viewing sort of like uh, direct shot at the entertainment center right here with a very pretty generously sized TV uh, essentially straight across from that sofa right there. But you can also tilt the TV out so if you want to watch it from the kitchen if you're doing some prep work uh, you know just flip your head around your shoulder to peek at something like the news or uh, if you're gonna be over here at the table entertaining the kids the kids can be watching a show and you can be putting food in their little bodies you know while you're uh, uh, you're just entertaining them for a minute to take a little break yourself because that's the whole point of camping is a little R&R &R. now there's a lot of little details that go into Eagles especially in the used market you don't typically see a lot of features like this yet like we've got uh, a wisp reductive air system and Eagle wasn't necessarily the first to do it but I think they were the first to perfect it in this class and category because with their helix air ducting system they actually get more airflow with less noise and that's that's a funny thing there's actually manufacturers out there right now that are advertising a system that is not wisp reducted but is quieter well the reason it's quieter is because it gets reduced uh, effectiveness and airflow but that's not the case in an eagle you get the best of both worlds here you might also notice they've got lots of windows and they all open for airflow so you get tons of light tons of airflow and of course there are pleated nightshades to privatize those and if those rear bunks just aren't enough space, well, you can always fold down the dinette or pop open that sofa to get some extra capacity. As we can see right here. So there's uh, a little storage, I don't know, pocket or chest, whatever you want to call it, under the, I guess you say that the headboard area of that hide bed And what's neat is that is adult size. Actually, my wife and I spent a, a weekend on one of those in the back of Mr. Halet's Montana fifth wheel when we did a big family camping trip. Some of you might have seen the video on that. 
And that's what's kind of neat about that privacy door wall combo that we're looking at right there that slides shut. It creates three separate sleeping zones, each having their own measure of privacy. Because obviously the rear bunk area can close off and the uh, master bedroom also can close off. So you've got a separate third sort of extra bonus overflow sleeping zone. Very handy if uh, you let the kids bring a, a friend or two. Now, the kitchen in this is actually pretty sharp, pretty smart. They did a lot of really good things here. But at a glance, you're looking at it and you're going, yeah, but there's no pantry. And what you might not have realized is it was really staring you right in the face the whole time. Next to that um, stainless front, eight cubic foot gas electric traveling fridge there, you've got a very large and in charge uh, amount of storage capacity. Now you might need a one or two step stool to get up here, especially to get to the back of that top shelf. You might want some long arms like mine or something to help you reach and grab things. But the fact is, it's storage and it's there. So what you do is you plan on how frequently am I going to use something and that helps you determine where to place it. Now you can see when the TV kind of swings out to allow access to what I kind of call the pantry tainment center here where the TV acts like a door to the pantry itself. It's never really in the hallway, I guess you could call it, the, the heavy foot traffic walking zone of the bunk area. So it's not like the kids are going to clip it and smash it or anything. You know, it's, it's pretty smart in that way. And this is deep, and I love that they put a shelf back there. Because it just, it doubles the amount of effective use space that you have there. But it's also offset a little bit. The other thing that's neat when a TV swings out like this is you can actually get to the plugs in the back. So if you do want to upgrade your entertainment system, add something to bring with you, it's very simple and easy to do so. Now you notice how the lower cabinets don't go all the way back like the upper cabinets do. That's because part of the outside kitchen is located under that TV hutch, if you will. And that's where your refrigerator and some extra little storage stuff would be uh, located over there. Now, moving into the bunk proper area, you notice these little step-ups. There are uh, big storage, well, there is one large storage compartment, two access doors uh, outside that we'll get to look at later. But that also creates easy steps for the kids to be able to get to the upper bunk uh, by themselves. So that, like, you know, you've got a bad rotator cuff or something, or just, I don't know, my eight-year-old daughter's getting big enough that old dad's having a hard time heaving her around. Although, I know that there's going to be a day soon where it'll be the last time I'm able to pick my daughter up. It'll be the last time she ever wants me to pick her up and carry her somewhere. So I try to do as much of it as I can. Because one of these days, that won't happen anymore. Now I'm sad. Ugh, moving on. Crap. Um, anyway, you can see how in these steps they created a drawer. I forgot to pull that bottom drawer open, but you can obviously see there is a drawer there. Plus, having dedicated bunk storage here. Anybody who has kids know how much space they take up. My wife and I, we had a small little charming starter home. It was our first house. We were doing great. It was enough. Then we had our daughter, and suddenly two-thirds of the house belonged to her, and she's got her stuff everywhere. Now, if it's going to be a rainy day, and you're just really cool parents, grandparents, whatever, you can uh, hook a TV up against the wall up here, and there is a handy little shelf. There's a little shelf headboard combo thing for both of the bunks, which <laughs> extra storage space. Again, good things. Um, but you could... The kids could maybe bring a little entertainment system or something like that, or have a place to charge phones. It doesn't just have to be for the kids. It could be, frankly, that could be an adult CPAP shelf, and it would work very well. Uh, so there's a lot of different things you can do. Now, um, Jayco is really good about a couple things that we can see right here, but they're not obvious if, if you don't know what you're looking at. And that's the fact that they use bunk mattresses that are essentially twice as thick as the industry standard. And even where you're not looking, it's plywood. It's not OSB or particle board. And OSB and particle board are fine materials. They're okay when used in uh, appropriate fashion. But the thing is, uh, plywood is a superior material in terms of if you're looking at equal grade. I mean, you can have some really high grade OSB, but that's not what's typically used in the RV business. Whereas, you know, the grade of plywood used in the RV business generally trumps uh, OSB with very, very few exceptions. Um, what I'm getting at here is they're just using better materials, which is why their bunks have a larger weight rating of uh, 300 pounds per sleeping space, which means 600 pounds total. Now we've seen the pantry, uh, so to finish up the kitchen area here, one of the first things I like is that any like flip open overhead door in pretty much any Jayco product 
uh, has struts on it so that it will hold itself open and you don't have to like try to juggle the dumb thing open. Also notice that they actually put a cabinet door over that microwave uh, spot right there. Whereas a lot of manufacturers just don't. It makes it a lot less useful for traveling cargo. All of the cabinetry is going to be pocket screwed. And you can even see as we scroll down all the uh, that green packet there. Those are all the original owner's manuals and everything that uh, we include uh, in a handy little you know organizer bag essentially for our clients when they purchase here at Halet RV. Our drawers are plywood, full extension, and easy to reach, which is nice. They're not on the back side of the island as I've seen some manufacturers do. You can also see... Um, the, uh, you know, you've got your dual sink covers that the folks had stored in transit, but, uh, you know, over top of that stainless double basin sink, and that is a pull-out sprayer faucet. Now, one last note of storage here in the living area. Uh, we mentioned how the dinette can fold down, but it can also be used as storage below. That's one of the other, uh, benefits of a booth dinette versus a freestanding dinette. Here's the thing, though. I've recently kind of noticed that people don't fully grasp the benefit of these handy little slide-out totes. Because they say, yeah, but the tote's not as big as the bench, so I don't get to use all of the storage space. No, that's that's not how you use these. So what you do, you put the, the stuff that you want to be able to get from the back of the bench in here. Then you slide it all the way back there. Well, now I've got about an 18-inch easy-reach storage compartment up front. But instead of having to take off the cushions, to take off the dinette base... All I have to do is move the two or three things up front and then slide the tote out and I can get to the entire bench without having to uh, essentially take apart and dissect half of my dinette. It's very inexpensive and maybe it doesn't look flashy, but man alive is that smart and effective. And I figured, hey, I'd take just a second to close everything up and let you get to kind of to see the kitchen area when it's not all, you know, all the doors and cabinets and everything hanging wide open. This is what it's going to look like most of the time for you. Nice, simple, easy, clean, and it's, I don't know, put away, you could say. Now, as we head upstairs, we're going to pass by this little uh, USB rechargeable remote control thing. This will operate your slides, this can operate your stabilizers, your awning lights, your awning itself. It can do a lot of neat things, and what's kind of cool about it is you have all those same controls right here. So why do I need a remote control? Well, if I'm standing inside the RV, and you're at an unfamiliar campsite, and you're not sure exactly where the hookup post or a tree branch or anything is, the shed next to your house maybe, you want to be able to open that slide without crushing things, uh, I assume, because uh, when you play bumper cars, everybody loses in camping. But I can walk outside of that remote control, and I can physically line a sight that slide out to make sure it's clear. Or, how can I stand right here and verify that the bedroom closet slide is closing unobstructed and not crushing and breaking things? And the answer is I can't but I can with that remote control. Um, we'll get uh, to the uh, bedroom area in just a second. First, I want to take a peek at the bathroom. Little fine detail, the bathroom door actually locks. It's amazing how many brands have non-locking bathroom doors. And we do have a porcelain foot flush stool here. Again, the Eagle tends to be a brand that says anything you can do, I can do better. Um, that means that they are typically not the very lightest or in the very least expensive, but they typically have the, the highest, I guess you could call it, trim package and equipment level. Now, I've specifically left all the lights off in here so that we could see a couple things, but i got to reach around the corner and find the switches. So, you've got your normal overhead cabin lights, of course, but then you, oop, there it is. I never remember which switch does what, because I'm in and out of so, so many trailers. You've got this little night light right here. Single blue element light. During the day, it's not terribly impressive, but at night... It is fantastic that it allows you to get in here and use the bathroom without really like being blinded or disturbing your partner. Plus, you have this handy little backlit, what I call morning mirror. Because I think that if I were trying to get up early, but I don't want to disturb everybody else yet, because sometimes you do have to rouse everybody up. Usually, I'm the person getting roused up. I don't know why I'm saying that. I'm always the late sleeper. <laughs> My wife's like, okay, it's noon. You have to get up now. And I'm like, Ugh. anyway, that's my life. But... I can, I can do this without getting direct, blasted in the face directly with hard, bright light. Now, you notice how the tile backsplash here, just a nice little extra touch. And that's not a small sink. That's just a big counter with a, uh, a nice chunk of storage below it as well. They didn't waste anything. That being said, next to this big, uh, tall radius shower, you've got a built-in linen cabinet right here in the bathroom. But what's neat is how that's actually... Ooh, God. 
bless it, I keep running into stuff today. Sorry if the camera works even worse than normal. But you've got uh, linen space right here in the bathroom, but it's in the slide. You can see how the slide actually goes from the bedroom to the bathroom, which is what gives you a dual entry door. Now, if we look up here real quick, you can see how that fan vent looks a little different. We'll talk more about that when we get up on the roof. Moving forward first into the bedroom, however, you can see that there's not that big 9-inch step o death at the end of the bed. There's a little nut, uh, bump, of course, and if it wasn't there, you really wouldn't have a good functional pass-through storage compartment. So it's kind of one of those necessary evils where you're, you're always push-pull fighting interior versus exterior space feature and function, and this is a nice little happy medium that it, it definitely works a lot better than those old heavy-duty ones, or big, you know, ankle breaker steps. But, it also means we have more storage below the bed. It's on uh, a plywood base. Again, even where you're not looking, they're still using better materials, and it's gas strutted for easy access. You also have just, oh, let me pull this thing down here. Should have cut my camera frame, but hey, too late. Um, we've got the dual element reading lights uh, above the headboard of the bed area. They're blue and white, depending on if you tap them or hold the button. And we've also got handy one switch cabin lighting for the master bedroom up here, and plenty of it. That's something I didn't talk about in the living room. Rewind the video a little bit to the living room when I was talking about the whisper ducted air when we first stepped inside, and you start counting the lights. There's a ton of lights in here, way more than most brands in this class and category. Very CPAP friendly or phone charger friendly side stands, frankly good for plugging into heated blanket. It is a 60 by 80 true queen bed. There are USB charging plugs on the, uh, as of our current view, right hand side. And this is one of those really smart eagle doing eagle thing features over here where they uh, actually include a window within the bedroom slide itself so you get that extra light and cross breeze while creating an extra little countertop space there uh, to kind of organize your things with the dresser drawer below. But why tell you about it when I can show you, right? That's why we're here, watching a video. Otherwise, you could just read a book about this thing. But a large hanging closet. Now, there are not hanging closets on both sides of the bed. You look at those and your knee jerks are, oh, those are hanging closets. They're a little too small to really be good full length hanging closets, but they're just extra shelf space. So that's awesome. And you are not losing total hanging storage because it's over here. Now, uh, it is set up for a TV against the wall. The previous owners never did that. They added this handy little shelf and sort of like, I don't know, maybe bathrobe or bath towel, coat, hook, whatever organizer. Here's a cool thing, guys. If you like this, great. It's yours you, when you buy the trailer. If you dislike it, great, take it out. No big deal, there's no permanent scars left on the trailer as a result. The outside, like the inside, is in fantastic shape. There's nothing I see here that really spooks me. We already saw the, uh, the grill in that front compartment. Um, the uh, side mount solar prep plug is actually right next to that. So it makes a very good spot to have one of those uh, portable solar panels. Or once again, you could simply, uh, actually once again, no. I, I've already recorded a segment on the roof. So what you're watching and the chronological order in which I've recorded these segments aren't always the same and I got myself all tripped up. Um, so if this were the movie Back to the Future, I would say once again, but it's not, and they haven't uh, developed a flux capacitor yet in the uh, DeLorean Motor Company, but the, the fact is, we will see the roof, and it does have roof mount solar prep. That's the long and the short of what I'm getting at. I just have a way of rambling around things and getting on tangents. So, awesome pass-through storage here, and note that uh, they've got the same sort of rubberized diamond print-ish, diamond plate print flooring in here that you would have in a toy hauler. They do that for a reason, because that stuff is great at grabbing cargo and keeping it from sliding around. You've also got lighting on both sides of the pass-through. You can see one there in the distance, because you use both sides of the pass-through. Most brands don't give you lights on both sides. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? And a simple little water and cable dock station right here. Now this, uh, something that you can't really see, I can tell you, about the Climate Shield package on all Jayco Eagle HT products, how they are 0 to 100 degree rated and have been for a number of years, but you can't see any of it. And this is one of those things that it's really hard as a, as a buyer to be able to discern differences between different brands when you can't see things. Um, but long story short, with the extra insulation and radiant barrier packages that they've applied to this, it is going to be uh, a great RV, even if you don't plan on snow, uh, you know, snowflake camping in the wintertime. If you just want to go when it's really hot, 
the it'll help with your AC efficiency, which it does have a 15,000 BTU air, by the way. That's something I didn't mention inside. When I was inside, though, I did tell you about the steps around the bunk area and the storage below the dual access doors, which is what we're looking at right here. Uh, you can also see how we have all LED tail and marker lights. That has thankfully finally become more common, but Jayco has been doing it for years. Another thing that they've done here that is still not commonly found in the RV industry is a factory installed rear towing hitch not an accessory hitch. There's a 3,000 pound rated uh, hitch on the back of this with safety chain hooks and four-way wiring. It is perfect for folks who like to put a little boat or a small enclosed trailer or something of that sort behind this rig uh, for traveling. When the RV's new, the great part about that is it doesn't void your, your warranty. When it's used, that is obviously not an issue, but it's still nice to know that it was done properly from the factory level. The uh, bracket on the back, that's there because we do have that original grill included with it. And this is our outside kitchenette. This floor plan does theirs a little different from pretty much any other one I've ever seen. Usually you get the fridge, the grill, the sink, and everything all in one enclosure. And here you can see it's been split. So you're thinking, why? Remember how the inside and the outside are constantly, uh, you know, fighting for space and vying for room. Inside here, that big jut out uh, is your bunk space. That's why they're able to include those handy little um, uh, headboard storage pockets in that area. Well, they left plenty of room below for easy access and note how very low to the ground this countertop is. And the thing is, it's not low to the ground, it's at a proper normal user height. It's just that most RV outside kitchens are way too high off the ground. And when you're trying to wash your hands in that sink, you look like an Olympic swimmer you know like a diver getting ready to dive into the pool with your hands all pushed together in like a prayer formation <laughs> i think you know what i mean if not don't worry about it. it's not important anyway but the fact is we've also got a galvanized rolled steel countertop here uh along with a galvanized rolled steel drawer and base for that cooktop and this is a real sink with a real drain that does drain into a holding tank now you have a couple different options when we were looking at the storage compartment on the other side do you remember seeing that blue coily hose if not, just back the video up a touch. You can swap this, what I call scorpion tail uh, faucet method thing, out for that. And you can have a door side campsite sprayer that has a residential garden hose fitting on the end. And of course, this arrangement also allows them to give you a bigger outside refrigerator and uh, a little extra storage space there. The uh, tires are original, but looking good. I don't see any odd wear patterns, but the folks actually upgraded the suspension. This is not the Jayco factory suspension. In point of fact, this is actually a grade of suspension that goes above and beyond what you typically find on a North Point or Pinnacle fifth wheel. So uh, what this does for you here is this allows for up to four inches of vertical travel versus the normal three on a uh, uh, most RVs. And it's got a heavier duty chuck system that we're looking at here to eliminate more shocks, jolts, bucking, and chucking in transit. That's a nice upgrade that they applied to that right there. The speakers on this are mounted low, very picnic friendly, so that you're not blowing away the neighbors next to those uh, uh, you know, anti-slip aluminum steps. And that is a wider entry door, by the way. One more thing I wanna point out. If you're paying attention, you might have noticed there was a backup camera on the back of the RV. There are also side view cameras here on the RV. Those were aftermarket add-ons uh, applied by the previous owners, and they did an amazing job. When I lifted up the bed, you might have seen some wires very nicely run down there so that they're out of the way and they're not gonna get in the way of anything. These are what the wires were going to. That's an aftermarket add-on. Here's the thing, I don't know the full details of that system because it's not a traditional uh, RV camera system. Uh, in just overhearing the previous owner a little bit, there's not like a, uh, a in, mon uh, or in the vehicle handheld monitor that is included with that. Rather, it was some kind of system that actually integrated into the vehicle's existing camera monitor and in-dash display system. So that's one of those things that if you're really curious about that, I would recommend you give our sales team a call so that after we've had time to dissect that a little more, we can get you some better info on it. 
other than just a little bit of seasonal storage dust the, the roof looks good the seals look good everything looks the way it should something I also like to do is look at the top of the slide outs and those similarly look uh, properly cared for maintained um, I don't see any significant like you know sun fading on any uh, of the black roof fixtures or anything like that Jayco tends to use uh, you know covers on things that have a little more of a UV inhibitor in them which is something I don't typically talk about when an RV is brand new because you know when they're brand new the, all the roof caps and everything on all these things look the same. But some do age and weather better than others, and these tend to do pretty well. Um, you can see how all the, the roof sealants and everything are good. It doesn't require even, even spot sealing at this point. Everything looks pretty darn sharp. You're going to get some good use out of this before you have to worry about any significant extra care and maintenance. Um, like you can actually see, <clears throat> if you look around this vent, you can see where they were cleaning around it to really properly inspect the roof seals at some point. So probably in the fall before they put it away. Now that fan cap might look a little funny if you've uh, you know looked at a lot of these vent caps and a lot of things. Eagle uses a little different vent cap where uh, it, it can close to make sure rain can't get in, but you never have to crank it open. If you do want to leave it open, pretty much in all but the worst of weather, you can and keep that fan running. So that's something that a conventional sort of flip top vent like that above the bedroom right there can't offer you without like a max air cover uh plus we have roof mount solar prep right here so if you do plan to be a more boondock uh oriented rver this has both side and roof mount solar prep and even the um the front termination strip here this is the number one place where uh leaks tend to occur if an rv is not properly maintained but that's not a problem here because this was properly maintained and i don't expect any sort of challenges so i always like to see RVs come in use to kind of see how they hold up over a little bit of use or a lot of use or whatever the case may be and I think this one passes the test this is done very well um, you know and if this one's close but no cigar understand guys we've only got <laughs> over 500 other things for you to look at new used and otherwise so give us a call we do hitching pieces parts trades finance truck and trailer package deals RV delivery and everything between and as you can see we've got plenty of service centers to keep you on the road so take care stay safe have fun and happy camping, everyone.